The latest Middle East ceasefire lasting less than two hours before Hamas broke it. Secretary of State John Kerry taking a lot of heat over his failed ceasefire attempts. Charles Krautheimer calling Secretary Kerry clueless and oblivious. And Charles Krautheimer, author of the book Things That Matter, has been on New York Times bestseller list forever. Charles joins us. Nice to see you, Charles. Good to be here again. Um, clueless in Gaza. Why? Well, for two weeks, uh, or two weeks ago, the Egyptians put a forth a ceasefire in place. Uh, and instead of just accepting it and saying this is the U.S. position, insisting on it, Kerry went off to Paris and negotiated with Hamas's lawyers and allies, Qatar and Turkey, and came back with a proposal that essentially backed all of Hamas's demands. And the reason he was clueless is it wasn't just an Egyptian proposal. It was supported by the Arab League, wall-to-wall -wall coalition, an amazing new kind of coalition. Israel, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, the Gulf states, Egypt, and even the Palestinian Authority. 22 members of the Arab right. League minus Syria. Minus Syria and, and, and Qatar, who are essentially saying they don't want to see Hamas rewarded, flourish, thrive. They actually want to see it diminished and, in fact, overthrown, because it is one of the leading edges of Islamist radicalism in the region. So presented with a wall-to-wall -wall coalition of Arab partners, what he did is he stepped all over it and astonished the Palestinians, no, the Palestinian Authority, the moderate wing, by bringing back all the Hamas to terms. Now, in the end, that didn't work. In the end, Kerry was able to arrange something like the original Egyptian ceasefire. Finally, he got a clue. I think it was the, the you know, the, uh, the criticism he got, especially from the Arabs. But, and I don't blame him at all for the breakdown of the ceasefire. That lies at the hands of Islam and Jihad, and that's why we are now in a crisis which will absolutely escalate. Is it possible, I mean, I, I see this from reading what you wrote and what others, is that having done that, having gone to Paris, he, he sort of validated Hamas, and now he can't sort of back it up. He can't sort of dial back that he's now got to give Hamas something maybe Hamas shouldn't have as, is, as Israel tries to protect itself long term. Well, I think the breaking of the ceasefire, the kidnapping of the soldier, has given Kerry an opportunity to walk it all back, which he did, and I commend him and the president, because what they did today is they seized on this a gross violation of a ceasefire. After all, if your policy is to arrange it, Israel wants to have one, everybody wants to have one. And the other guy, within an hour and a half, kills two of your soldiers during a ceasefire and kidnaps, then how can you have a ceasefire? So they were very tough in demanding the return of the soldier. And I think it has given him an opportunity to walk back all the demands he had made or all the, the proposals that Hamas had demanded uh, that he had brought from Paris. Yeah, Hamas is just getting pummeled on the ground. Maybe not in the world of public opinion because they've been very effective at, at the world of public opinion. There are many that are, you know, uh, are slapping Israel um, right. and not Hamas. Uh, but, you know, it's like they're getting pummeled on the ground. And it's like, and had, had, they, had this been some sort of errant officer that did the kidnapping or something, they should at least jump on it and let him go or something. But instead, they back it up by doing nothing. And it's going to be worse. They're going to play cat and mouse. Is he alive? Is he not? Hezbollah did that for years with two Israelis that they had kidnapped. In the end, it turned out they had been dead the whole time. Israel exchanged a lot of prisoners in return for their bodies. Uh, they will play that cruel game. They won't let the Israelis know. They'll drag it out. But I think the fact that Kerry and the president were very angry about this, because this is a fundamental issue. This doesn't Whatever the merits of the case, I think they are quite strongly on Israel. So, but even if you are agnostic on that, when you have a ceasefire, which is the only way that you can progress on this and save lives, and then you don't honor it and you kidnap and kill, that means everything is gone and you are truly to blame. I just hope that we stick to our hard and consistent and honest line now in saying this rests on the shoulders of Hamas. The onus is on them to give the soldier back and to, and, and to establish a real ceasefire. And, oh, and if only the rest of the world would likewise get on that program. The rest of the world's reaction to what's happening in Gaza is Orwellian. It is shocking, especially in Europe. It is a resurgence of anti-Semitism not seen since the 30s. This is a recurrence. It's all over the world. And don't tell me it's anti-Zionism. You listen to the slogans. You see the signs. 
Hitler was right in Germany, a sign in Germany saying that, that this is a veneer that is a, a front for anti-Semitism, and it is back. It's all over the world, and that's what we are now beginning to face. And I read on Bloomberg News today, 53% up in anti-Semitic attacks in London alone. Anyway, yeah. Charles, nice to see you. I should say this year. Nice to see you, Charles. Thank you.